Hello everyone. Welcome to the Materials Innovation Hub Project Diaries. This week, we'll be going to the Materials Engineering Lab. My name is Priscilla, and I'll be your host for today. I have a very nice gentleman here with me. Of course, I'm not doing this alone. Yeah, I'm Kwe Augustine, and then I'm going to be Priscilla's co-host for today. And then I'm really hoping to learn a lot from the live today. And I'm hoping someone is working on some innovative idea to start this journey I'm seeing right here. Join us as we go to the Materials Engineering See you! We are finally inside the materials engineering lab. I can have some final year students in here and I want to know the projects they are working on. But then I'll ask this gentleman if you first before we start the program. So please also know. I'm seeing some nice colorful um liquid here yeah. which looks like cassa purple. Is it cassa purple? No. Nah. <laughs> it's not purple. So I was like my pets come wild and I don't know what it's it's a solution. It's, it's a lignin solution. So what? Lignin solution. Lignin solution. Alright, and it will see on your lignin solution. Okay. So what do you want to do with this lignin solution? You want to expect lignin. So do you mind telling us what yeah. it is? Okay, um, you see the, the plant was like normally plant was they constitute of three units that are cellulose and cellulose and logo. Like when you talk about the strength of a plant was the cellulose and cellulose and level that you know constitutes of giving the strength. So some people think of it to be as a waste sample because when you're than taking like maybe uh, bags of the uh, wall and uh, uh, sorry fuel or something and they are done processing it into whatever you want to form whatever they get they throw it away but that shouldn't be the case because uh, they, they they take it as a biomass but at least we we have found another way to use our biomass okay, so how are you going to use our biomass to extract lignin for and you can use it for you know biomass some biomass materials are rich in carbon Okay. Like, they have, they have lignin cellulosic biomass. Hey, they have lignin what? Cellulosic. Basically, lignin plus cellulose. I don't want to back my hands. I want to try to see. So they, they are rich in carbon. They know carbon can be used for a lot of things. Okay. So they just give us one application of this. Can be used as. Electrodes for spark capacitors, uh, emulsifiers, low load construction, bitumen, and dispersants. Yeah, they look. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time.
the lab is very very busy now as you can see the final years are really working and then the place is very noisy pardon us for the noise okay so we are moving on to the next group to see what they are also working on okay so there are some students over here i want to find out from them what they are working on so i would let them introduce themselves as usual and then we'll proceed from there gentlemen please what's your name Please. I'm Asari Karim Kojo Jr. Asari Karim Kojo Jr. And you? I'm Steven Etiba. Steven Etiba. Etiba, okay. So, Steven and Asari, please, what are you working on? Uh, we are working on our Capstone uh, final year project. And it is centered on fabricating supercapacitor electrode from activated carbon obtained from avocado seeds. Supercapacitor electrodes, okay. So, if I may ask, what societal problem or problem you want to solve with this um, project? Yes, so the problem we are trying to address is the fact that with the emergence of uh, technological devices, there has been a high demand for energy. So most of the times, energy storage devices tend to be obtained from carbonaceous fountain heads derived from fossils. But we are trying to fabricate a supercapacitor from activated carbon. When we do this and then we are successful, the implication is that the tendency at which we are going to uh, derive carbonaceous material from fossil fountain is going to be counterpoised by the biomass material we are going to use. So in effect, we are going to extract carbon materials for electrochemical energy storage from a renewable source in preference to the non-renewable source, which is the carbon fossil fountain heads. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is your activated carbon? No, this is our carbonaceous material yet to be activated. Okay. So do you mind telling us how you activate this carbon? How we are going to activate it? Yes, this carbon, we are going to activate it via the impregnation method using potassium hydroxide with a mass ratio of 1 is to 2. So, I hope there is no girl here because they are saying impregnate. I'm quite confused. Are you trying to impregnate something? No, it's, it's a method of uh, uh, activating chemical, chemical activation. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, Asari and then... Okay, so thank you for your time. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I want to know what you are working on. I can see some samples here. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm working on a steel. Okay, so actually I'm trying to add in this steel um, steel sample. So this is my original steel that I have, and I've taken it through heat treatment what to is make heat sure. Treatment? Yeah. So um, heat treatment is basically um, applying a high amount of heat to this sample. And change the structure to a different structure according to the cooling that I use. Oh, okay, so if I get you or you are going to heat it and then cool it back again? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. So the cooling um, that I use have given me four different samples that I'm using right now. So I have normalized steel, I have annealed, I have quenched, and tempered. Okay, so with this one, um, I allow it to cool in air. So I took it from a furnace and I allow it to cool in air. This one, I allow it to cool in the furnace. Okay, so I just off the furnace and I allow it to cool. With this one, when I took it from the furnace, I drop it in water. Okay, so I quench it in water. And the tempered one, I quench it in water with this one and I kept it in the furnace again to heat it to 400 and I quench it again. I hope you understand that. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm actually having four different structures here. And at the end, you have a nice different microstructures. And the microstructure will tell us um, the different hardness that I'm going to have according to how I quench them. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. That's nice. So, what are the implications of what you are doing? Because me, I don't know what. <laughs> yes. So, you see, um, when you are working with steel, okay. So this is steel that um, I pick from the factory. Let's say I bought it from Alouettes. Okay. okay. And this steel I want to use in a building, um, building of story building, a very long one. Okay. So. I will check the hardness and I will see that this thing is not hard enough. Okay, so um, for after 10 years, my building may collapse. So I want to heat treat this and make sure it's strong, okay, that it can withstand um, whatever condition we will use this thing for for a very long time. So we will do different heat treatments, then I'll check the hardness values. So I can see that, okay, with the anew, the hardness was. Um, 100 hv this is 150 hv so with this one i can take this for my work do you understand so that's what i'm trying to do to get the different hardness values and different microstructures then i'll compare them and pick one for the particular application i want to use it for so basically that's what i'm working on oh, wow. yeah. that's nice yeah so i want to know how is the heat treatment done is it that you're going to place them in the sun or yeah, so um, it's a simple furnace that we use. Okay. okay. Yeah, so the furnace and um, it will heat up to 900 degrees. So 900 you, can, degrees. Yes, you can imagine that. Yes. Um, and this one will turn red hot. Yeah, almost melted. Then you just um, heat them and bring it out and put them in the, the different printing media you want to use. Okay. Yeah. So after after this, what's what's next? Okay, so after this, um, that's what the next step is. What I was doing and it was making noise. I'm sorry about that. So, yeah, so I want to get a mirror-like surface like this. Okay, so this is a mirror-like surface. You can actually see your face in it and watch it under the microscope to see the microstructure. Do you get it? So um, these are the samples after taking it. You see, it's they are all dark. And I want to grind it, okay? All the samples are dark, okay? So I want to grind these dark samples and make it mirror light like this one. So this is what's um, making the noise. So from here, I'll send it to the microscope and we look at the microstructure. So that's what I'm working with. Okay, so can you see the microscope? Yes, um, I have the microscope. Um, I have um, some of the microstructures. You can move over there and show you. It to to observe the microstructures of these samples. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so um, welcome back again. So when we are done with our um, polishing of our surface to get a mirror-like um, surface here. So all the samples have the mirror-like surface here. So I'll put um, the sample under the microscope. Then you adjust it and see the different microstructures you get with um, the different samples that I did. Okay, so um, let's do our adjustment. So this is a software that's um, displaying whatever I'm supposed to look through the microscope to see. So it's easy over here. So after that, I'll take a pic of it. Then we we'll compare the different microstructures. Okay, so at the end of the day, this is what we are having. Um, very nice microstructures, as you can see, um, with different um, heat treatment, I have different microstructures. So I have the original sample over here. I have a new sample. I have normalized, normalized, um, quenched sample and tempered sample. So you have the different microstructures. So as I was saying, this will tell me the specific application I'm supposed to use it to do. Okay, so we have fine grains. So you can see it's small, small grains that I have with the anew. Okay, as compared to the one I allow to cool in air. See, so you have bigger grains. You can see the difference with original sample. So this is what I was having and I placed in the finish to get these samples. Hope you, you understand. So then this is what I'm getting right now. Okay, so Mr. Latif, um, I'm seeing different shapes in pictures on the board. Could you explain what that means? Yeah, so um, um, we have 
different sizes okay so let's pick um anew okay so with anew this is the original sample okay so the steel sample we are having different green size and different colors so the colors is um, alternating um faces you get it so we have two different faces here okay so let's um, say in a kind of water we have a solid and a liquid that's exactly what we are having over here you get it and if you come to the new the same faces but um, it's kind of small we've reduced these sizes to a very small size and if you see the tempered one too we are having um, a matte inside that's like this and we are having small pair lights within the matte inside how you, you see um, so that's um, the structure and this will have um, some kind of toughness as compared to this one is it clear so that's um, the different um, shades so the shades is talking about the different faces you have so black will give you a different um, face and the ash or the gray will also give you a different shape okay thank you very much that's it for your time yeah thank you okay. so till you're almost down move out and then we show you around small and everything see you outside